Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Michael, you're watching IDB, and in this video I'm showing you some iOS 18 hidden features. So in our previous video we covered all of the big major changes in iOS 18, but in this video I wanna show you some of the smaller, uh, less prominent features in iOS 18. So let's go ahead, roll the intro, and jump right in. So first up is a change inside of Calendar. This is a pretty small change, but it is one that I appreciate so much. So here inside of Calendar in the month view, you can see that we have a bit of a redesign. On iOS 17, you may remember how annoying it was where you only had a singular gray dot at the bottom of each day, signifying that you have some type of event on that day. You didn't know what calendar it was on, you didn't know how many events you had, but here in iOS 18, you can see how many events you have on a day and also which calendar that event belongs to. So this is a much better way to see your month inside of iOS 18. Next up at number two is a pretty cool feature that Apple didn't really talk about that much at their event when they talked about iOS 18. It is here on their website and it's called Emergency SOS Live Video. So it says you can share streaming video and recorded media during emergency calls. So you can imagine just how useful this is gonna be that if you're on that emergency call talking to someone, you're actually able to show what the issue is using the camera on your iPhone. So I have a feeling this is going to be a very useful feature. I hope you're never in the situation where you need to use this, but if you are, it is definitely gonna come in handy and could potentially help save your life. So next up is inside of Apple Music, and we have a few changes inside of here. First is when you hit the Q button, you can see that the buttons at the top are now a lot bigger. That was one of my pet peeves before, the, uh, the shuffle and repeat and infinity buttons were really small, and here in iOS 18, they are a lot more clickable. Also, a change that Apple has made behind the scenes is when you queue up a song. So it's really annoying when I'm playing a song from my entire list of Apple Music songs. I have like a thousand songs in my library. If I queue up a song, it's gonna add it to the very end of that queue. So for example, if I'm playing a song that starts with the letter A, I'd have to go through the entire alphabet of all my songs in the list before I get to the song that I queued up. Now that has been fixed in iOS 18. So even if you're playing a song right from the middle of your library, just like this, so say for example, uh, I pick one of these songs that starts with B, if I queued up a song, it is going to put it right after that song and it's going to ignore the alphabetical sorting that we had. So this was a huge issue before in Apple Music and now it has been resolved. So to show you this next feature, I had to change my wallpaper because it has to do with the bezels on my iPhone. Now I'm doing a screen recording and I don't know if it's gonna come through. And if it doesn't come through, I'll give you a uh, separate video clip of it. But in iOS 18 on new iPhone models, we get a really, really cool attention to detail type feature. Whenever you press any of the buttons, the bezel of the iPhone actually indents. So you can see here that the, uh, the side of the iPhone looks like it's kind of jutting out as I press the side volume buttons. This is just one of those only Apple could do features and it's really cool. And seeing this kind of makes me look forward to the future and I feel like Apple is going to eventually get rid of all of the actual clicky buttons on their iPhone and just have force sensitive buttons. And I feel like this is definitely hinting at that future of iPhone. Next up is an accessibility feature called eye tracking. Yeah, you heard that right. We have eye tracking now on the iPhone and it uses the Face ID hardware built right in. So here inside of settings, you wanna click on accessibility then scroll down a bit and you can see it is right here with a purple icon. As soon as you turn it on, it's gonna ask you to calibrate it. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. So it just tells me to look at the dots as they move around the screen. So I'll keep my iPhone a bit closer and I'll do that. So there, it looks like eye tracking was enabled. And now I'm literally able to control my iPhone with my eyes. If you stare at the right thing for long enough, you can go into the, uh, the menu. So if I stare at touch for a little bit, it's just gonna open. If I stare on the back button for long enough, it's gonna click it. And this is really cool. And I can only imagine it's gonna get better as the betas progress and they fix all the bugs. And next up is a very small feature, but it is one that I appreciate so much. When you're in the clock app and you start a stopwatch, it is now going to live in your dynamic island so you can instantly see the status of your stopwatch right up here on the top of your iPhone. And then we have another really cool feature inside of settings and then battery. So if we go here and then click on battery and then click on charging, you're actually able to choose a charge limit for your iPhone. Now, I do believe that this feature was available for newer iPhone models, but you were not able to specify the charge limit like you can here in iOS 18. 
And I did see another article online saying that after you use your iPhone for a few days with iOS 18, your iPhone is actually going to recommend a charge limit for you. So I believe the screenshot I saw, the iPhone was recommending a 90% charge limit. And essentially what this feature is for is your battery health. So if you do not charge your iPhone all the way up to 100%, it's actually gonna be better for the battery health long-term on your iPhone. So if you rarely ever burn through all of your iPhone's battery, I definitely recommend setting a charging limit right here inside of settings. And next up is a pretty small UI change on the lock screen. So if you go ahead and press and hold, then press on customize, then click on lock screen then click on the clock. You can see that we now have a new option for a gradient on the clock. I think this looks okay. I don't think the wallpaper I have now matches quite perfectly with it, but I feel like if you have the right wallpaper, this is going to look quite good. Next up is again, inside of settings, we're gonna click on accessibility. Then we're gonna click on motion. You're gonna see that we have a new toggle in here called show motion vehicle cues. And if I turn it on, you're gonna see it's not gonna do anything. And that's cause the iPhone has to detect motion. But if you are, say for example, the passenger in a car and you have this turned on, if you are prone to getting car sick when staring at your phone, hopefully this feature can help you. And what it does is it essentially places a bunch of little dots around your iPhone display. If you ask me, that would drive me absolutely crazy. But uh, if you tend to get car sick, maybe try it out for you, it might work. And apparently it's just gonna help keep your bearings a little bit more when you're staring at your iPhone in the moving car. Next up is a very small one, but it is definitely a new feature. Inside of the redesigned control center in iOS 18, you can see at the very top right, we now have a power button. So if you wanna quickly turn off your iPhone, you no longer have to use the buttons. You can simply go into control center and turn it off from the top right. Next up is a really cool feature, but I honestly don't know who's ever going to actually use this in iOS 18. So open up settings and then go to the top and then search for music haptics. It's right here. And then if you turn this on, whenever you are playing any type of music on your iPhone from Apple Music, you're gonna feel the haptic engine in your iPhone vibrating along with the music. I assume this is good for people who are hard of hearing that still want to experience music. I love that Apple is uh, giving us accessibility options like this, but as just a normal feature, I honestly can't see it being that useful for me. Another cool thing is it's actually available inside of Control Center, if I can find it. So we're gonna go here, add a control, and let's search for music haptics and it's right there. So it says unavailable, this is a beta, but if you do want music haptics quickly available to you, you can add it inside of Control Center and you can also turn it on in settings as I showed you. Next up is for users of the iPhone 15 Pro, more specifically the action button. So here inside of settings, if you click on action button, and you scroll all the way to the right, you're gonna see that we have a new option called controls and you're able to choose a control. You'll notice this looks very similar to the options we had to change our control center and pretty much you can choose any of those toggles now for the action button. So say for example, I wanna use my action button to turn on dark mode. Well, I can do that now with my action button just like this. So you can pretty much choose any system control to change with the action button on your iPhone. And I think this is going to be a very popular choice for a lot of iPhone 15 Pro users. Next up is kind of a weird feature. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's kind of a strange feature. I have no idea why Apple included it, but it could be useful in a few very small situations. So if you turn on your flashlight, you're gonna notice that the island gets huge. Now, originally I thought this was a bug, but it's actually giving you controls for the flashlight. So if you swipe down, you can choose to lower the intensity, but also if you swipe left and right, you can actually narrow the width of your flashlight. So I didn't know that Apple had this much control over their flash. I'll actually bring my iPhone into view here and you can actually see it is changing the flash. I don't know actually how much it's doing, but I'm uh, changing the width right now to make it narrower. Now I'm making it wider and then also making it brighter. So we have a bit more control over our flashlight options in iOS 18. And next up is for the Photos app. So the one problem I had in iOS 17 with the Photos app is just how annoying it was to play videos. As you remember, there was a horrible scrubber at the bottom of the screen, and it was just impossible to find that exact moment in the video that you were looking for. Luckily in iOS 18, this is now fixed. So here's just a quick video of me and my brother golfing, and you can see that the scrubber at the bottom is a lot better. Another thing I love is that the video is now on repeat. So before on iOS 17, the video would play once and then it would be over. And then the player or the scrubber at the bottom would get tiny. And if you want to go to the start of the video, you would either have to go back to the previous photo and then swipe again, or you try to poke your finger in the very tiny spot to start the video over again. 
the whole process just sucked. So now in iOS 18, the video player is better, the scrubber is better, and the video is going to loop for you. And then also for the next feature, staying inside of photos, we also have a new utilities album if we scroll all the way to the bottom. So you can see here, we now have an option for receipts. So the photos app is now intelligent enough to recognize receipts in your library, and it's gonna intelligently put all of those in that folder right here. And I have another really cool accessibility feature I wanna show you on the iPhone. So here inside of settings, you wanna click on accessibility, then click on touch. And then the new feature I wanna show you, you can see it is right here if I scroll down, is called sound actions. You're actually able to do an action on your iPhone if you make these sounds with your mouth. It sounds kind of weird, but you can actually go and you can make your iPhone do a feature. It almost feels like a jailbroken iPhone feature. You can see here we have practice. So the iPhone is gonna play that sound that you can make to do that feature. And it's essentially like the back tap feature. If you know that from iOS 17, you can triple tap or double tap the back of your iPhone to do certain things. Well, you can essentially do that now by making a noise from your mouth. So kind of another way to enable certain actions on your iPhone. And then one more really small hidden feature I wanna quickly mention for iOS 18 is inside of battery. I keep scrolling down because battery used to be down here, but in iOS 18, they moved it to the top. So here, battery. When you are in battery settings, if you have a slow charger connected to your iPhone, it is now actually going to say slow charger. Now, I found a screenshot of this earlier today, so I'll throw it up on the screen right now, but it is kind of nice that your iPhone is going to let you know that it's charging slow. I just wish that we could get a feature similar to what Samsung phones have, where it can tell you exactly how long until the phone is done charging. However, we don't get that here. We only get the knowledge that our iPhone is charging slow and Apple is trying to tell us to use a faster charger. So those are all the hidden features I could find in iOS 18. Let me know your favorites in the comments down below. If you guys found this video informative, entertaining, helpful, anything, uh, please drop a like and leave a comment down below and let us know what you thought. With all that said, my name is Michael with IDB. Make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on notifications as we do have a lot of great content coming for you very soon. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.